I found myself standing outside the entrance of the infamous haunted restaurant with my friends. My heart was racing, and my palms were sweating as we approached the eerie, dimly lit entrance. The air was thick with a sense of foreboding, and I couldn't shake off the feeling that we were about to enter a realm beyond our control. As we walked inside, I couldn't help but notice the unsettling decor. The walls were covered in old, tattered wallpaper, and the dim lighting cast shadows that danced menacingly around us. The creaking floorboards underfoot only added to the feeling of unease. My friends and I were led to a table by a server who looked as though she belonged in a horror movie. Her pale complexion and sunken eyes were enough to make my skin crawl. As we sat down, I couldn't shake off the feeling that we were being watched. The silence in the room was deafening, and I found myself holding my breath, waiting for something to happen. The menu was filled with gruesome sounding dishes that only added to the unsettling atmosphere of the restaurant. I couldn't help but feel that something was off about the food, as though it was tainted by something sinister. But my friends and I decided to take our chances and ordered some dishes. As we waited for our food, the atmosphere grew even more sinister. The walls seemed to close in on us, and the shadows seemed to grow longer. I could hear whispers coming from the corners of the room, but when I looked, there was no one there. When our food arrived, I couldn't bring myself to eat it. The dishes looked unappetizing, and the smell was enough to make me gag. I couldn't shake off the feeling that something was wrong, and I urged my friends to leave as soon as possible. As we made our way towards the exit, I felt a chill run down my spine. I couldn't shake off the feeling that something was following us, and I couldn't wait to get out of that place. As we stepped outside, I let out a sigh of relief, grateful to be out of that restaurant. Looking back, I still can't shake off the feeling that there was something truly malevolent about that place. But one thing is for sure, I'll never be going back to that restaurant again. As we walked away from the restaurant, I noticed that my friends were all silent, lost in their own thoughts. None of us wanted to talk about what had just happened, but I knew we were all thinking the same thing. That restaurant was not just haunted, it was cursed. As we walked, I noticed that the shadows seemed to be following us, looming closer and closer. I couldn't help but feel that we were being watched, and that we were in danger. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up, and I felt a sudden urge to run. Suddenly, I heard a sound that made my blood run cold. It was a low, guttural growl, coming from somewhere nearby. My heart was pounding in my chest as I looked around, trying to find the source of the sound. But all I could see were shadows, lurking in the darkness. We quickened our pace, but the growling grew louder, and I knew we were being hunted. I could feel the presence of something malevolent, something that wanted to hurt us. And I knew that we had to get away as fast as we could. As we turned a corner, we saw a figure standing in our path. It was a tall, thin man, dressed in black robes, with a hood that covered his face. I couldn't see his features, but I knew that he was not human. My friends and I froze in terror, unable to move or speak. The figure stepped closer, and I could feel the weight of his gaze on us. And then, in a voice that sounded like it came from the depths of hell, he spoke. You should never have come here, he said. This place is cursed, and now, so are you. And with that, he vanished into thin air, leaving us alone in the darkness. We ran as fast as we could, not daring to look back. And as we reached the safety of our homes, we knew that we would never forget that night, or the horrors that we had experienced. For we had stumbled into a realm of darkness, and we had barely escaped with our lives. As we ran, our footsteps echoed through the deserted streets, the sound of our pounding hearts the only thing we could hear. But as we reached the outskirts of the town, something changed. The air grew colder, and the shadows seemed to stretch out towards us, as though they were alive. I could feel a presence behind us, something that was hunting us, following us. My friends and I didn't dare to look back, afraid of what we might see. And then, suddenly, 
we heard a sound that made us freeze in terror. It was a voice, whispering our names, coming from all around us. I looked around, trying to find the source of the sound, but there was no one there. Just the shadows, twisting and turning, as though they were alive. And then, I saw it. A pair of eyes, glowing in the darkness. They were yellow, like the eyes of a predator, and they were fixed on us. I knew then that we were not alone, and that whatever was following us was not human. We ran faster, our breath coming in ragged gasps, but the presence behind us grew stronger. And then, suddenly, my foot caught on something, and I fell to the ground. My friends didn't stop, they just kept running, leaving me behind. I tried to get up, but I couldn't move. I was paralyzed, trapped in the grip of terror. And then, I felt a cold hand on my shoulder, and I knew that whatever was behind me had caught up. I tried to scream, but no sound came out. And then, I saw it. It was a figure, dressed in black robes, with a hood that covered its face. But this time, I could see its features. They were twisted, inhuman, and its eyes were glowing with an otherworldly light. It spoke, in a voice that sounded like a thousand whispers. You should never have come to this town, it said. Now, you belong to me. And then, it vanished into thin air, leaving me alone in the darkness. I tried to get up, but my legs wouldn't move. I was trapped, alone, and afraid. And as the shadows closed in around me, I knew that I was not going to make it out alive. As I lay there, paralyzed with fear, I could feel the presence of something watching me. The shadows twisted and turned, as though they were alive, and I could hear whispers all around me, coming from the darkness. And then, suddenly, I saw it. It was a figure, floating towards me, its robes billowing in an unseen wind. Its eyes glowed with an otherworldly light, and its face was twisted into a grotesque smile. I tried to move, to scream, to do anything, but my body wouldn't respond. I was trapped, helpless, at the mercy of this creature that was not of this world. It reached out a hand, and I could feel its cold, clammy grip on my shoulder. And then, it spoke, in a voice that was like nails on a chalkboard. You have trespassed on sacred ground, it said. And now, you must pay the price. And with that, it pulled me towards it, its grip tightening around my throat. I tried to fight, to struggle, but it was like fighting a ghost. It was too strong, too powerful, and I knew that I was going to die. As I felt my consciousness slipping away, I saw my friends in the distance, calling out to me, trying to help. But it was too late. I was already lost. And then, suddenly, everything went dark. The creature was gone, the shadows were still, and I could breathe again. But the memory of that night, of that creature, would haunt me forever. I never went back to that town, and I never spoke of what happened to anyone. But I knew that I had glimpsed a world beyond our own, a world of darkness and terror, where things that should not exist lurked in the shadows, waiting for their next victim. Years went by, but the memory of that night never faded. I tried to forget, to move on with my life, but the fear lingered, always present, like a dark cloud hanging over me. And then, one day, I received a letter in the mail. It was a simple white envelope, with no return address. Inside, there was only a piece of paper, with a message written in a spidery hand. I remember you, it said. I know what you saw. And I know that you have something that belongs to me. I felt my blood run cold. Who was this person? What did they want from me? And how did they know about that night so long ago? But then, as I read on, the answer became clear. It was the creature, the one that had haunted me all these years. It had found me, and it wanted me to return what I had taken. I tried to ignore it, to pretend that it wasn't real. But the letters kept coming, each one more menacing than the last. And then, one day, there was a knock at my door. I hesitated, 
But then I opened it, and there it was. The creature, standing on my doorstep, its eyes glowing with an otherworldly light. I tried to run, to escape, but it was too fast. It grabbed me, its grip like iron, and pulled me into the darkness. And then, everything went black. When I woke up, I was in a place that I didn't recognize. It was dark, and there was a musty smell in the air. I could hear the sound of dripping water, and the faint whispers of voices all around me. And then, I saw it. The creature, standing before me, its eyes blazing with an otherworldly light. It spoke, in a voice that was like death itself. You thought you could escape me, it said. But you were wrong. You belong to me now, and there is no escape. And then, it vanished into thin air, leaving me alone in the darkness, with no way out. I knew then that I was going to die, and that this was my punishment for what I had seen so long ago. And as the whispers grew louder, and the shadows closed in around me, I knew that I was never going to escape the terror that had haunted me all my life. As the darkness closed in around me, I realized that there was no escape. The creature had me now, and I was at its mercy. But then, suddenly, I felt a surge of energy coursing through my body. It was like something had been unlocked within me, a power that I had never known existed. And then, without warning, I let out a scream that echoed through the darkness, shattering the silence. And with that scream, a wave of energy burst forth from my body, tearing apart the shadows and the whispers, and banishing the creature back to the other world from which it had come. I was left standing alone in the darkness, trembling with fear and disbelief. Had I really just defeated the creature that had haunted me all these years? But then, as I looked around me, I realized that something had changed. The darkness was no longer oppressive and terrifying, but instead, it was comforting, like a warm blanket on a cold night. And then, I saw them. My friends, who had been lost to me for so long, were standing before me, smiling and laughing. They had been with me all along, and had never left my side. As we walked out of that place, into the light of day, I realized that I had been given a second chance, a chance to live my life without fear or regret. And I knew then that I had defeated not just the creature, but also the darkness that had consumed me for so long. From that day forward, I lived my life with purpose and joy, never forgetting the lessons that I had learned in the darkness. And though I never forgot the terror that I had faced, I also knew that I had the power within me to overcome it, and to emerge victorious in the end.